right, well, he has been a pillar of Fierce Fighting Championship since day one, and we are headed back up to his neck of the woods in just a couple of weeks. The voice of Drive Time Sports, the voice of Carbon and Emory County Sports, and the Fierce FC Technical Director, Jordan Buscarini, one of my dear friends and mentors. This is an absolute treat for me, Jordan. Thank you so much for joining us. No, it's a treat. It's a treat to join you, Blake. I really appreciate the invite. Uh, it's been a long road, man. You and I, I can't remember, uh, it's hard to remember, I should say, the, the promotion without you and without Zach, because uh, we've been through so much over the last like four or five years. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a great point. Like, like there's so many things to talk about, but I do want to kick things back to you because you go all the way back to the beginning. You remember Fierce FC one and all those early days up there in price. Do you have any specific memories of when Cody reached out to you when you want when he wanted to begin Fierce Fighting Championship? Yeah. Um, well, not necessarily when he wanted to begin Fierce Fighting Championship, but when we talked about the media aspect of it. And so uh, Cody and I go way, way back. And uh, there was a particular time he came into the radio station and he was talking about advertising for an event. And during that time, he said, you know, I would love to get the video aspect of this on. Is that something that you guys could do? And I remember that the marketing rep that he was talking with said, well, you probably need some play-by-play. -play. And he pointed at me and he said, Jordan, because Cody was aware of my work. And so uh, going back to the very first time we ever did a video broadcast of Fierce Fighting Championship, it was literally me with a headset on, standing at the cage, recording and announcing at the same time. <laughs> like, like when you go back and think about it and how far we have come uh it's marvelous man it's been so cool to kind of see the promotion grow from a media standpoint but also just from uh from a promotion standpoint in general because uh you know cody he, he had a vision i think early on i think he's put the right people in place to kind of grow that vision and it's coming to fruition so you know, I'm always a believer that it's it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And we've all kind of been on that journey together. And I think that's what makes Fierce so special. I absolutely love that story. I think every broadcaster has some wild stories of, of ways that they have called fights in the past. And just, I can't believe this is how we're doing this. Is there any other kind of wild, fierce memory that you remember where you're like, oh my gosh, like this is this is just, this is unbelievable that we're doing this for this show specifically on those early days. Yeah, yeah. There, so we we kind of we kind of advanced, right? We kind of advanced past the point of of me uh, holding a camera and doing play by play. And I remember we actually did this at the Carbon County Event Center, where we're going to be uh, coming up in July. And what I had done is I installed webcams on the posts, and I actually sat down at the broadcast table and I did the controls while we were announcing. And we had a three man booth. And uh, I, re I remember thinking, okay, uh, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. But still at that point in time, we had you know, me running the, the, the technicalities of it uh, with a couple of other play-by-play -play -play guys. And uh, from that point on, it just seemed like we started adding more and more and more, and we started getting more and more support. And, uh, you know, Cody has always been just, just top-notch. Whatever, whatever you need, let's just get it. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. And so uh, to me, I, that was kind of the, the point where we started to see some things grow. And then we moved into the Maverick Center and when we moved into the Maverick Center. Uh, you know, we had some other ideas and it's just it's kind of grown. I mean, obviously, me being a part of Pat's Media, Pat's Media has played a key role in that as well, investing in the equipment that we have today. And, and honestly, Blake, if we talk about how the promotion has grown from a pay-per-view standpoint, you and I are in the trenches. So we've seen this uh, grow and evolve really over the last, what, three, four years, right? As, as we continue to add a little bit more and, and the partnership between Fierce and Pat's, I think has been, it's been fantastic. I, I almost feel like uh, it, it's not, you know, we have Fierce, we have Pat's, but I kind of feel like we're one in a sense. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I will say this personally, it is through you and the domain that you guys have that I have the opportunity to cover UFC events and things like that when they come into town, or if we have someone on the road uh, from Utah, I get the chance to go on the road and represent you guys, which is, which is such an incredible honor. One last thing about kind of memory lane with Fierce Fighting Championship. Do you have a specific favorite fight, a fighter, a specific moment that maybe the masses don't remember because it was such a long time ago? Um... I saw some, re I've seen a lot, my, my, you know, if I have to have a personal fighter, it's Mike Jones, uh, Mike, Mike Jones, you know, he's, he's from this neck of the woods. I've had Mike on my show several times. I remember one instance in particular and Mike, I mean, everybody knows Mike right now, right? I mean, we're talking about a champion within the promotion, but I remember one time Mike uh, was, was in the studio. He came in to talk about a fierce 
uh, fighting championship event. And I had Evander Holyfield on my show that day. And Mike kind of set in on that interview. And, and I remember I asked Evander Holyfield if he had any advice for, for Mike. And, you know, he, he, you know, gave some advice and Mike was here for that moment. That was pretty cool. Um, you know, Mike Jones, I saw Mike uh, step into the ring with Ky or step into the cage rather with Kyle Stewart. That was a very cool fight. Bobby King, Bobby King fights were always fascinating to me, uh, especially when we were out of the castle country area, because it, today, I mean, you think about it today, like with like Mafaleo and, and I think Zeke Law too. And we all have our favorites, you know, on the card today, Mike Jones being another, the pop surrounding a Bobby King fight back in the day was absolutely insane. Like, you know, this is a play by play guy. When Bobby King would come to the cage, you would get goosebumps sitting cage side because of the excitement that would fill the building. And so Bobby King is always going to be one of my favorites. And he put on a show every single time he was inside the cage. And, uh, you know, now we see Bobby outside the cage, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I think those memories really stand out to me. I'm always going to have a soft spot uh, in my heart for Mike Jones and, and, and Bobby King. Yeah, I think that those are two of them that, that really stand out to me. Bobby, obviously, from the early days. So to peel back the curtain just a little bit, you were the Fierce FC play-by-play -play guy for many, many years up until uh, Sean O'Connell did a couple of events. I know Zach and Jason did a couple of events, and then I kind of, I've, I kind of settled into my role as well. That being said, you got the chance to call all those Bobby King fights, yeah. or, or at least a lot of them, I would say. Yeah. Do you think Bobby King is a pound for pound number one fighter Fierce has ever seen? Because personally, on paper, I would have to say it, he has the highest accolades of anyone who's ever walked into that cage. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think that there's people that are testing that, right? There are people that are pressing. Uh, but I also think there's something with with being the original, right? And, and we can use a, a reference. Let's talk NBA. You and I are big NBA basketball fans, right? So you look at Michael Jordan, especially from people from our generation. He kind of sets the bar, right? Now we compare everything that LeBron James has done, that Kobe Bryant has done. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. Steph Curry, we kind of compare the bar that was set by Michael Jordan. And so in, in my mind, when you take a look at the, the you know, the, the pound for pound greatest of all time within Fierce, I think Bobby King set that bar. And I think that's what those th those other guys are working towards, if that makes sense. So when we're talking about Mike Jones, obviously a local in the area in which you cover so many sports you have for north of 16 years at this point. When you're talking about Mike Jones, you also think of the Clay Collards, the Kesley Collards, so many Fighters have come out of that area. Do you have any great memories of those collared brothers on the field or on the court or anywhere that they might have competed outside of the cage or the ring? Oh my gosh, Clay Collard was another beast when that guy was on the football field at Emory High School. I, I mean, you couldn't take your eyes off of off of Clay Collard. Uh, you know, we, we got the cliche nickname of Big Play Clay because it seemed like every time. Clay Collard was out there on the football field. Uh, he was making something happen. And then it was always his little brother, uh, little brother, Kesley. And I thought that Kesley did a fantastic job of kind of getting outside the shadow of Clay Collard. Those two were so dynamic when they were out there on the field. And they kind of personified what I love so much about rural high school football and Emory High School in particular, right? Because uh, these are blue collared, hard nosed kids. And I think that both the Collard brothers kind of fit that, that bill to the T. And so to, to watch Clay and Kesley, every time Kesley's in the cage, I get excited about it. I know when I'm, I'm behind the scenes and, and I'm running production on the actual fights, uh, I always try to, well, it's the broadcaster inside of us, right? It's the sports guy inside of us. We know that we can't be biased, but there's always a little something extra when Kesley's out there and when Mike's out there and, of course, Clay. And to watch what Clay has done has just been uh, phenomenal. So, yeah, you know, this area, there, there's a lot of tradition in that realm. And I think those are the three names that kind of stand out. I think so much about your broadcasting career. You've been a mentor for me since day one, and I, I appreciate you too a level that I don't think anyone even understands. This is a very behind the scenes person, you know, us two talking about this, but when it came to calling MMA, I know you kind of kind of come from the boxing world, obviously the traditional ball sports. How hard was it to transition to MMA for those years that you called those, those fierce fights? It was tough, man. It was really tough because uh, I, I am a boxing guy through and through. And it's, you know, I have a lot of respect for, for the field of MMA, but I feel like in order to be a, a successful play-by-play -play announcer someone you have to enjoy the tedious aspect of it you have to enjoy when, when you listen to a to a Blake broadcast or a Jason broadcast you know when you you guys are the absolute best at it you can dig deep into every little nook and cranny and I have that ability in football I'm so passionate about it. I have that ability in basketball and baseball and you know what you and I you know when you talk about being a mentor you and I help each other out so much uh, I think you kind of still have the same struggles with baseball that I had it with, with MMA right uh, and, right 
you know, play by play guys understand this. I love, the, I, I enjoy the sport of MMA. I have the utmost respect for everyone in it, but at my heart, I'm a boxing guy. And so, uh, for me to actually take a step back and focus on another love of mine, which is production and visuals, and to try to work with the limited, um, you know, the, the limited, you know, faculties that we have, the limited, uh, you know, make, make something grand as grand as we possibly can with little assets to it. That's something that I absolutely love doing. And so to sit back and hear you and Jason, and if it's Joel or if it's Eric or if it's, you know, Kat, whoever it is on the mic with you guys, that's such a joy to me to be behind the scenes because you are so passionate about this sport. You eat, drink, live, breathe this sport, right? You know, the fighters inside and out. And that was something that I, I could just, I could never have, I could never have that with the fighters. And so, uh, you know, when the day came for me to step aside and know that, okay, this is how we get it to the next level. I got to take a technical approach to it. You got to be the man behind the mic. It was a great day. And it's been a blast ever since just watching it grow in that sense. Did someone, ha I don't even, I've never asked you this. Did someone have to have a conversation with you when it was like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to kind of transition from you to someone else. Did you step oh. away or how did that kind of all play out? Uh, you know, it, 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 I'm trying to remember actually, man, I think you and I were supposed to do a fight together. Yes. Yeah. We were supposed to do a fight together. And for some reason, you weren't able to do it. It was COVID. COVID happened. That event oh. got canceled. Well, there I'll you never go. forget it because I thought my opportunity with Fierce was over and I'd wanted it for so many years at that point. And I was <laughs> devastated. And I remember, I remember it was Cody that said, I'm going to introduce you to Blake. He's going to help you out of the broadcast. And I remember now, now this is all, this is all coming back to me. I remember having a conversation with Cody and saying, you know, is this the guy that we can put in this play-by-play -play seat and I can kind of focus on the technical aspect of it. And now, now it all makes sense. That's right. It was COVID. And so, no, I, I think we were all on the same page uh, with that realm because a lot of the time when fierce is going on, a lot of people, we always joke, you and I always joke, right. To do play-by-play, -play, all you got to do is show up, sit down and talk. That's all you got to right. do. Right. That's, right. That's we, all it is. Yeah. Yeah. We make jokes about that all the time. Uh, but for me, I'm traveling all over the state. I mean, I, I do basketball for three schools, uh, it's rural basketball, so there's a lot of travel. I'm traveling for football. I'm traveling for baseball. There's so much travel that goes into my job that I was actually looking forward to taking a more technical side to it. And so I was hoping that they would find someone that could step in and do play-by-play. -play. In fact, I shared the broadcast booth with Zach Partridge once. Mm -hmm. I got to share the broadcast booth with Zach. And Zach was such a tremendous help because he's so much more knowledgeable on the sport. And so, no, I, you know, now that it, that I remember correctly, nobody had to have that conversation because I think we were always looking for someone that could fill into that role. So I could take a step back and focus on the things that I really enjoy doing. And that's, that's working behind the scenes. Did you ever think that fierce would amount to what it is today? Arguably one of the, if in my opinion, the top regional promotion in the entire West coast, some of the best fights you will ever see in a can't miss event. Anytime it's coming to your town. I did. I did. And I'll tell you why, uh, because of Cody right? Because of Cody Bunderson. And once Cody brought Zach on, I realized the sky's the limit because you have two guys that are extremely savvy. You have two guys that understand what it's like to be a fighter. And, and that's one of the things that I've always respected so much about Cody and about Zach. They do everything they can, right? To, they've been in the fighter role. And I think when you have a passion, when you have a desire for something, the way those two do, the sky is the limit. And from the very beginning, Cody had these plans of, okay, we want this to, to gain some notoriety. We want this to gain a reputation. And then I just, I seen it elevate when Zach took it over and I've had conversations with Zach. I know how passionate he is about not only the sport, but also sports management. Like we talked several, several times. And I know that Zach would love to be a commissioner, right? Of a league. Okay. So you have somebody that has the vision like Cody that has the compassion that has the drive like Cody. And you mix that with someone that's got the smarts, the compassion and the drive of Zach sky's the limit. So I, I knew from the very beginning with Cody that this would go as far as Cody wants it to go. He's just that kind of person. So yeah. Yeah. To answer that question. Absolutely. What does a typical fight day look like for you? You are the first one through the doors before literally anyone else outside of the cage crew. Cause you need the cage to be set up in order to do your part of the job. But what does a typical fight day look like for you and the production team? So we're based out of price. So typically we have a long drive. Uh, so we lock up shop Friday night because we are a radio station. Uh, my show's, you know, Monday through uh, Monday through Friday. And then I'm, I'm on again on Sunday. So we prep up the weekend because I know that by the time we get home on Saturday, I'm not going to want to do anything on Sunday. Um, so Saturday morning for me, I wake up early. Um, maybe I'll have some breakfast. I hang out with my kids for a moment. 
we meet here at the radio station. We typically take off at around 8 a.m. And uh, one of the things I always do, I always stop off at Maverick. I'm not a big energy drink guy, but I will have two energy drinks every fight day. Uh, <laughs> just because it helps me focus a little bit. We know it's going to be a long day. We get there. We unload all the equipment, which is a little bit of a workout in itself. Um, you know, I got a great crew. I got a fantastic crew. Uh, Ryan, who does a lot of the graphics, a lot of the visuals. Uh, basically, Ryan will set up the cameras. I'm going to run the uh, all the, the cords, the wires. I'm going to get underneath the cage, and we get to work. And at one particular time, it would take us about uh, three, three and a half hours to get things set up. Uh, the last time we were at the Maverick Center, we actually timed it. it. took us 47 minutes to get set up. So that's how we have streamlined this. And so once we get set up, I'm going to go through. I'm going to make sure that everything is working. Uh, the, the main problem that we always seem to, to run into in, in locations that we're unfamiliar with, it's internet connection, right? What's the internet connection going to look like? Love to run the test there. Once we get everything set up, typically we'll, uh, we'll go grab a bite to eat. We come back. I meet up with you. We go over notes and then boom, we start, uh, we start doing all of our tests, all of our mic checks. We start running. Uh, we contact uh, the provider. Okay, this is what time we're going to go on. We take a look at the rundowns that you provide for us. It's a full day, man. It really is. And then by the time we get home, I mean, again, being in price, we're looking at about a two-hour drive up, a two-hour drive back. We typically get back into town. So we leave at about eight. We typically get back into town mm, between midnight, one o'clock in the morning, unload, probably back home at 2 a.m. So it's about an 18 to 19-hour day. Uh, but I'll tell you, you're so busy and you're so amped up for it that it really doesn't feel like an 18, 19-hour day. It does, that it does the next morning. And I know you know that. No, it really, it, it's fascinating. I mean, I used to freelance and, and do a lot of work in college with ESPN and we would legitimately go in 4 a.m. and not be going home until 2 a.m., a 22-hour day. That was kind of the norm. And and it's when you're working on these productions and working alongside all these incredibly talented people, it is so much fun to be around them. And you're doing something that you love, which obviously you and I have both kind of followed our passions in that way. And, and again, Jordan, I, I just, I can't thank you enough for, for all of your help, all of your guidance and all that, that you and the guys over at Pat's media do, um, talking a little bit about that. Your day won't be as long on July 13th. You get to be right up the road at the carbon County event center for yeah. fierce challenger series 11. And this card is absolutely stacked. I just would love to get your thoughts on some of these fights, something that flies off the film for you specifically, as we're going to be coming to your backyard. Oh, Jackson to gray, right. I think any time that he steps into the cage, uh, when you sent me when you sent me the card, I mean that's the first name that pops up. I think that when you take a look at what he's accomplished over his last few fights in Fierce, I think he's extremely entertaining. I know we do the pound for pound rankings. You see my rankings, so you know how highly I think of Jackson DeGray, right? So for for everyone in price, I think there's always one guy that kind of stands out that I can sell when I'm on my show. You don't want to miss this. Here's the great thing about this card: there's literally four or five fights that are an easy, easy sell when you guys come to price on July 13th. Uh, but for me, I mean, it's Jackson DeGray because. Again, when I'm running, when I'm, I'm flipping from each camera, I'm choosing. So, you know, if you're watching the pay-per-view and you get upset at a camera angle, odds are it's my fault because I get to pick what camera angle is actually going to be on the pay-per-view. With Jackson, you literally have, yeah, I mean, you, th there's a couple of guys like this on the card. You have to be on your toes. You can't relax because this fight could be over literally at any second. And so I think you put Jackson in with his winning streak. I think this is going to be a phenomenal fight. And that's the first name that stands out to me. I can't wait to watch a fight. Cannot wait for it. July 13th, Carbon County Event Center, Price, Utah, a cannot miss card. A couple of titles on the line. Nasir Davis as well, another name who has splashed onto the scene from the Las Vegas area. Nate Reinhart, Christian Cortez, not to mention Starling Simmons and Ben Robinson as well. Jordan, we are currently running out of time, so I actually got to wrap this up. But you do not get the credit you deserve. I am so glad to be able to share this space with you, to be able to interview someone who I look up to so much in this industry. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for the time. That means the world to me. Uh, you know, it, it's it's one of those deals when we walk in, it, it's it's kind of a family environment, man. We feed off of each other's enthusiasm and energy. So it's been a pleasure to work with you and the entire Fierce crew. And I can't wait uh, for July 13th here in Carbon County. It's going to be great.